star of the hottest telenovela in Brazil. Brazil's sweetheart, as she's known, is happily married, and as 1992 comes to a close, she's looking forward to exciting projects that will take her career to new heights. But on a dark night in late December, Daniela would end up in the crossfire between two psychopaths who are fueled by a toxic bond brimming with jealousy and lust. What would follow was a brutal and heartbreaking tale that would captivate a nation, and one that no writer could ever imagine. Hello and welcome to The Dark Side of Love. I'm your host, Bianca Sloan, author of suspense novels about the dark side of love. And this week I'm putting a spotlight on the case I'm calling Tune In to Murder. Born in Rio de Janeiro in 1970, Daniela Perez and her two younger brothers, Rodrigo and Rafael, were the children of engineer Luis Carlos Perez and telenovela writer Gloria Perez. Gloria, who was mentored by the renowned writer Jeanette Clare, slowly but surely worked her way up the ranks of the telenovela world, eventually becoming heralded for the way she skillfully wove social issues into her stories. Although Daniela's youngest brother, Rafael, was born with developmental disabilities, the family was a close-knit one, spending holidays and vacations together with lots of music, dancing, and laughter filling the home. Daniela's other brother, Rodrigo, called his older sister his protector. Daniela began dance lessons at the age of five, eventually securing a spot with the professional dance company as a teenager. And it was dancing that led to her acting career when she was offered a role as a tango dancer in a popular telenovela, which eventually opened up opportunities with even more telenovelas. Her talent stood out as she was able to take small roles and turn them into big ones. As her profile continued to increase and her talents recognized, Daniela was invited to audition for a telenovela being written by her mother Gloria called Of Body and Soul. Daniela would win the part, going on to play the role of Yasmin, the younger sister to the show's main character. Daniela's character Yasmin was paired romantically with Bira, played by Guilherme du Padua, whose character the Los Angeles Times described as, quote, a jealous and brooding man. Of Body and Soul proved to be one of the hottest, most watched telenovelas in the country, captivating audiences with its steamy and heartfelt storylines. It's not long before Daniela is dubbed Brazil's sweetheart. In the midst of the success she was having on screen, Daniela's personal life was also blossoming. In 1990, when she was 19, she married fellow actor Raul Gazzola after being introduced on the set of a telenovela that they were both starring in. By all accounts, it was a happy and passionate marriage, and by the end of 1992, the couple was in rehearsals for a new play meant to show off Daniela's dancing prowess and set to debut in the new year. According to Gloria, 1993 was full of promise for the family, both personally and professionally. It was a year they were all looking forward to with excitement and anticipation. That is, until December 28, 1992, a day that Gloria said in the HBO Max documentary, a brutal pact, quote, crushed us all. Gloria said what was most extraordinary about December 28th was how ordinary it was. She had tasked herself with finishing up the next batch of chapters for Of Body and Soul so that she could enjoy the holidays. Daniela's husband, Raul, says the couple woke up, had breakfast, then left for work. She at Tycoon Studios while he headed to another studio, Projac. They would have rehearsal for their play that night, and overall it was expected to be just another day ending in Y. During the day, Daniela stopped by her mother's place to borrow some money for a car she was already making payments on, a Ford Escort, but she wanted to go ahead and finish paying it off. And as Gloria says in the documentary, she was in debt at the time and was reluctant to give her daughter the money. But Daniela pleaded with her that it was the perfect car, so Gloria relented and gave her daughter $6,000 in cash. Daniela leaves and Gloria gets back to work. At 6 p.m. that night, Raul is on his way home and drives by Tycoon Studios, which is a straight shot to his and Daniela's apartment. 
He doesn't see Daniela's car in the parking lot, so he assumes she's already at home waiting for him. Except when he arrives, no Daniela. He calls a friend, someone who was in production at A Body and a Soul, to ask if she's seen Daniela. The friend informs him that she talked to Daniela about 10, 15 minutes prior to him calling, and as far as she knows, Daniela is on her way home to him. Raul continues to wait for a bit, but something about Daniela's being out of touch just doesn't sit right with him because it's just not like her. And there are all kinds of scenarios to be worried about. Maybe she's having car trouble. Maybe she's been in a car accident. Maybe she's been mugged because remember, she's carrying around the $6,000 that her mother gave her for the car. Another incredibly worrying thought is the possibility that Daniela has been kidnapped, which apparently was quite common in Brazil back in 1992. A worried and anxious Raul decides to call the rehearsal hall where he and Daniela would be rehearsing their play, thinking maybe they got their signals crossed and that's where she is. Nobody there has seen her, and in fact, they've been calling Gloria's house to see if maybe anyone there has seen Daniela. Once Raul has confirmation that no one has seen Daniela, he hops on his motorcycle, deciding she must have had car trouble, and he's going to go out and find his wife. Also remember, it's 1992, so there's no cell phones, just landlines and payphones. By this time, it's late, it's dark, and there's nothing that can be left to chance. Raul stalks the main road where Daniela would have been and finds no trace of his wife. Eventually, he heads to Gloria's apartment, having determined that Daniela's been kidnapped. Gloria is not ready to go there, and she says, you know what? Maybe Daniela had some extra scenes to shoot for the show, so she calls the director over at the studio, who informs her that while Daniela wasn't taping any scenes, he did see her leave with her co-star, Guilherme. Gloria then gets on the phone with Guilherme and asks, where's Daniela? He says he doesn't know, then says, maybe she's with some friends. Well, this sounds ludicrous to Gloria, who, and this was kind of funny, said that Guilherme just sounded kind of idiotic to suggest this, so she's anxious to hang up and go and find someone who has actual information about where her daughter might be. Then Guilherme mentions that as they were leaving the studio, there were some fans, a couple of young kids, hanging around outside looking for autographs, pictures, that kind of thing, which is allowed, totally common occurrence. So Gloria gets back on the phone, calls someone else at the studio, and asks them to call Guilherme for more information because she has lost patience with him. She doesn't want to talk to him at this point. Meanwhile, as Daniela's family and loved ones desperately try to locate her, Hugo de Silvera, a local attorney and businessman who's in Rio de Janeiro to visit with his daughter and grandchildren, takes his grandkids to visit his mother, and as he's driving on Avenue of the Americas, which is the main road between Daniela's apartment and Tycoon Studios, where she works, he notices two cars on the side of the road, seemingly abandoned, in front of this dark, almost deserted, wooded area. One is a Santana, the other a Ford Escort, which is the exact make and model of Daniela's car. So the first thought is maybe it's some people who need help. Then you think, well, maybe it's a couple and they came in separate cars and they're out there in the woods somewhere making out. But there is another reason why Hugo's curiosity is piqued. Because at that time, in that particular area of town, there were a lot of muggings, and police had asked residents to be extra diligent about anything out of the ordinary, anything suspicious. So Hugo passes these two cars a couple of times before he finally jots down the license plate numbers of both, then leaves. Hugo returns to his daughter's place and mentions this curious situation of two cars parked out on this road to her and his son-in-law, who's the manager of this nearby condo building. And the son-in-law says, mm, this sounds kind of off, so I think we need to check this out. So he and some other people in the building drive out there, and by now, there's only one car, the Escort. It's weird, it's suspicious, he calls the cops. 
An officer comes to check out this seemingly abandoned car, and he kind of wanders into the woods, and while he's there, he quite literally stumbles over a body. It's Daniela, and she's been stabbed to death. Daniela Perez was 22 years old. Meanwhile, at the police station, word has reached Raul about Daniela's car being found abandoned. So he rushes to the police station thinking, she's there waiting for me. Maybe she was an accident. Everything's fine. Uh, However, police take him and Daniela's brother, Rodrigo, to the murder scene. And there's no mistaking that his wife is dead. Gloria is also making her way to the scene, still clinging to the hope that her daughter has been kidnapped and not murdered. She says in a brutal pact that as she pulled up, the first thing she noticed were Daniela's signature white high-top Reeboks, and that once she touched her daughter's hand, she knew. She was gone. Daniela had been stabbed 18 times, 12 stab wounds near her heart, four in her left lung, and two in her neck. She also has bruises on her face like she's been punched, and it's just a brutal, horrific way to die. This is a massive story, huge. Daniela's murder transfixed the world, garnering headlines around the globe, even pushing news of the impeachment proceedings that were happening against Brazilian President Fernando Coyer de Mello, who had resigned in a corruption scandal right off the front page. The initial working theory was that it was a mugging gone wrong, because remember, Daniela had $6,000 in cash on her. Her bag was missing. The car was still there. It's a remote area. She looks like she's been beaten in the face. So at first, this theory seems to make sense. Meanwhile, police head to the home of Hugo de Silveira's daughter and son-in-law because they've heard someone there has written down the license plates of the two cars that were out at the crime scene, the Ford Escort belonging to Daniela and the mysterious Santana. Hugo hands over the information and the police get busy tracing the plates on the Santana. Back at the police station, Raul Daniela's husband and her brother Rodrigo are fielding a stream of visitors who are congregating to learn more about what happened. People who are there to comfort the family. And one visitor in particular stands out. Guilherme, who plays Daniela's love interest on Of Body and Soul, beelines for the police station and specifically Raul. He throws his arms around Raul gushing shock and disbelief and I can't believe this has happened and who would do this to sweet Daniela and if there's anything I can do I'm here for you just on and on and on and it's weird because he and Raul aren't friends he and Daniela weren't friends they were co-stars but not friends literally Guilherme is just a co-worker so this whole display strikes everyone as more than a little strange it's definitely over the top definitely bizarre For his part, Raul seizes on the fact that Guilherme saw Daniela with some kids outside the studio and asks him, you know, who are these kids? What happened? And Guilherme says, it wasn't them. It was not these kids. Meanwhile, Raul's friend, fellow actor Claudia Rea, who's at the police station, notices that Guilherme has some scratches, like fresh scratches, on his arm, which is kind of curious. She keeps it to herself, but it definitely raised her antenna, like, what's that about? What's going on? Gloria, meanwhile, she makes her way to the police station, and one of the deputies pulls her to the side and reads off a list of actors from the telenovela, just checking names off the list. But then he stops at one name in particular, Guilherme de Padua. The deputy informs her, I know this is him. He's the culprit, because by now... The cops have run the plate numbers that have been given to them by Hugo, so they know that the Santana, the car that was behind Daniela's Ford Escort that Hugo saw out on that road, they know the car belongs to Glarme. 
Like, they aren't even saying, like, oh, what a coincidence that your car was there, too. We want to ask you some questions about it. They're saying, no, no, no. This is the guy. This is the one who did it. The deputy warns Gloria not to let on because, according to the law, he can't get into Guilherme's house until 6 a.m. the next morning. So if it gets out that he's a suspect, he'll flee, and they'll never get him. So Gloria stays quiet and turns her attention to burying her only daughter. Daniela's funeral is just waves and waves and waves of people. Like, just when you think it's the end of the line, no, there's thousands more people flooding the streets, cramming into the chapel, just total madhouse. Raul, Daniela's husband, is inconsolable, and Gloria is glued to her daughter's casket. And as she's mourning, the producer of, of Embodying Soul tells her that she wants to call Guilherme, because when she saw him at the police station the night before, he made a point of asking for information about the funeral arrangements because, as he told the producer, quote, I want to be by Gloria's side. I want to comfort her. Can you imagine? You are mourning your daughter who's been brutally murdered, and you have to be worried about placating, possibly welcoming the man who held the knife, that you have to accept his condolences, his phony concern. Still, remembering what the deputy has told her about the importance of not tipping anyone off about Guilherme's guilt and the fact that the police are on to him, cool as a cucumber, she reaches into her purse for a phone token, hands it to the producer and says, here, go, call him. The producer makes the phone call, but as she reports back to Gloria, the police are already there. By this point, Police know that Daniela and Guilherme had shot scenes together at the studio on December 28th. They also know that Guilherme's car was with Daniela's car at the crime scene. And they know that Guilherme has tried to tamper with the license plate number on his car. Oh, it's not looking good for this guy. So all of this adds up to them heading to his apartment to give him a chance to explain himself. When they arrive, Guilherme is actually sleeping, and he says he can't come to the police station because he's really tired, and he didn't really sleep that great the night before, and is it okay if he just drops by later? Uh, the police lie and say that all the other actors from the studio are already at the station, and he doesn't want to be left out, does he? Unable to resist this lure, Guilherme goes to the station and tells the police that yes, he and Daniela filmed scenes together on the day she died. Their characters... Yasmin and Vera were breaking up, and according to Guilherme, Daniela was very nervous about these scenes. He says they finished and then they left together before he went to pick up his wife Paula at the mall. Now, the cops, they do their due diligence and check out his alibi, but it's total fiction. And, as a result, they arrest Guilherme for Daniela's murder. At the time of his arrest, Guilherme is 23 years old, and he and Paula are expecting a baby. So let's detour for a bit and talk about Guilherme and Paula. Guilherme grew up in Belo Horizonte, which is Brazil's sixth largest city. He came to Rio de Janeiro to be an actor, scoring a role in the uh, theater production called Blue Jeans. However, it seems he took the acting part just a little too far because he had a real tendency to be over the top on stage and off. Everything was just a little bit too much with him. As noted by fellow actor Mauricio Matar in A Brutal Pact, Guilherme, quote, had a few screws loose, meaning he's a bit of a cuckoo clock. Okay, maybe a lot of a cuckoo clock because a term that gets used a lot to describe Guilherme is psychopath. But we'll get back to that. As Marcus Montenegro, one of the producers of Blue Jeans, said in a brutal pact, quote, wherever there was trouble, Guilherme was involved. For example, instead of a choreographed stage punch, he would actually punch the other actors. And if there was a scene involving a pocket knife, instead of like the prop, he'd have an actual pocket knife. I mean, he just was taking the realism thing just way too far. Despite all of this, Guilherme stays in the show, and Blue Jeans is a monster hit, 
lines around the block. Women coming to see this show like it's their full-time job. And one of those women, well, girl, I should say, is Paula Tomas. She is a frequent attendee at all of Guillermo Ray's shows, whether it's Blue Jeans or Leopards, which was another show he did. It was like a male review. Uh, but whatever it was, Paula was there in the audience watching every move Guillermo made. I think she was like 18 at the time, uh, Paula. So a girl, really, really young. Um, but her jealousy over these other girls, these other women that were checking out Guillermo in these shows eventually gets her banned from some of the venues where she where he's performing because she's threatening to like smash their faces with bottles with like glass bottles like she is off the rails this chick right uh kind of to that point a former fiance of paula's marcus santos described her in a brutal pact as quote possessive aggressive and emotionally unbalanced when he told her he was breaking things off and moving to another city, she threw herself in front of a bus, which I guess is one way to make your point. Uh, but that was just, you know, just one example of just how over the top uh, Paula could be. So when Paula and Guilherme hook up, it's really a match made in hell because she's obsessed with him and crazy jealous. And he's a total opportunist who will do anything and anyone to get ahead, including marrying the very wealthy Paula. She comes from family money. In order to really prove their devotion to each other, they each get very personal tattoos. In other words, he had her name tattooed on his woohoo and she had his name inked on her hoo-ha. I mean, these are just two cuckoos and a clock, truly. Okay, so back to the investigation. During the police's 10-hour interrogation of Guilherme, he repeatedly denies to them that he had anything to do at all with Daniela's murder. Except, except, his story keeps changing. And none of the evidence supports what he's saying. Where it all starts to fall apart is when the police show him the evidence that he tampered with the license plate on his car. Coupled with the statement from Hugo, who saw Guilherme's car with Daniela's car that night. And then he starts to realize, jig is up, they got me. So he confesses. According to Guilherme's original confession, which let me stress this, this is the draft he started with. <laughs> this was not the movie that was actually filmed, okay? Uh, but in his original confession, he claimed to have stabbed Daniela with a pair of scissors because... She was harassing him. You see, in the first draft of this confession, Daniela was desperately, madly in love with him, and she wanted to have sex with him. She was feverishly pursuing him, throwing herself at him, begging him, please, please, please sleep with me. So he starts to think, hmm, okay, well, because I won't sleep with her, maybe that's why our characters are breaking up. Because she's telling her mother, hey, there's no use for my character, and now they're trying to get rid of me. So he says to Daniela, okay, hey, you know what, let's talk about this, let's figure it out. And he insists that that night, Daniela lured him from the studio out to this dark, deserted road in the middle of nowhere, so that they could talk. And while they're out there, he continues to reject her because he's happily married. He has a baby on the way. So no, Daniela, I will not sleep with you. I mean, it just, you say it out loud and it sounds ridiculous, right? Okay. But he continues on by saying that after being so brutally rejected by Guilherme, Daniela breaks down in tears, sobbing, and being the gentleman that he is, he gets a tissue out of the glove compartment, and that's when Daniela sees some scissors. And in a frenzy, this crazed, lovesick woman who can't stand being rejected by this man assaults him with these scissors, which is how he got the scratches on his face and arms. In the attempt to stop Daniela's attack on him, Guilherme grabs the scissors from her and blacks out. How convenient. And because he's blacked out, he doesn't know what he did, what happened next. But whatever it was, he was doing it in self-defense. Of course he was. 
And that point, he choked her and she stopped breathing. And his bright idea was to take the scissors and punch a hole in her neck so she'd start breathing again. Yes, that's, that's what they teach you in CPR. Punch a hole in someone's neck with scissors. That'll do it. Well, by now he's scared. He's got to do something. So he decides to stage a mugging. He stabs her 12 times, then takes off with her bag, which, remember, had $6,000 cash in it and some letters, he says, that he had previously written to her. Are you as exhausted by this long and winding and utterly ridiculous story as I am? Uh, so crazily enough, even though this story is just completely ludicrous, the headlines in the media at the time, like the constant stories at the time, report that Daniela and Guilherme were having this hot and heavy affair and that the motive for the murder was this fatal attraction nonsense that cast Daniela as this crazy spurned lover. I mean, a lot of the media at the time, the police were repeating this like verbatim almost to the media. It was just it was nonsense. Um, regardless of how insane this story sounds, police have a confession and into jail, Guilherme goes. Oh, but wait, there's so much more to the story. Okay, so Paula, let's talk about Paula. That's Guilherme's wife, his uh, crazy wife who's been banned from places for threatening people with bottles. So um, that gives you an idea of who we're, what kind of a person we're talking about here. Um, but at this point in the story, this is where things start to get really twisted. I mean, like they weren't already. But while Guilherme was in custody, he asks if he can call his wife. And he's granted that phone call. And the head deputy hears him say to Paula to the effect of, quote, don't worry, I'm taking care of it. So a light bulb goes on over the deputy's head and he says, oh, wait a minute. The wife is involved in this. Deputy immediately puts out the word, arrest her. Well, police get there and Paula has a confession of her own, which is, I was there too, but I didn't do anything. I just watched. Like I said, plot twist. Now that Paula's been arrested, the story becomes that she went to the scene because she suspected that her husband and Daniela were meeting there to get it on, and she went there to stop it. Except, a fight broke out, and Guilherme was choking Daniela, and then Paula is the one who stabbed her with the scissors. So, <laughs> police have confessions from both Paula and Guilherme. But, because Paula changes her story again, and because she's pregnant, some of the cops start getting nervous and let her go home. Also, remember, her family's wealthy. That's another, that comes up later. Um, but they let her go home with the absurd belief that she'll be back. But, um, sorry to break it to you, no, she's not coming back, okay? Uh, the scuttlebutt was that police were going to run with Guilherme being the murderer and Paula's family, who, remember, had money, would pay for his defense. So, total cover-up, total corruption. In other words, police have no intention of investigating Paula for Daniela's murder. While all of this is happening, Guilherme is released on a technicality, so both of the people who, has, who have confessed to murdering Daniela are in the wind. Everyone is, of course, flabbergasted, furious, and afraid even by this turn of events because two confessed murderers are on the loose. Eventually, with the entire police force and really the entire country hunting him down, and who knows what anybody will do when they find him. Guilherme turns himself in. A warrant is also sworn out for Paula's arrest, though she continues to deny any involvement whatsoever, claims she never confessed, never made any statement. As Gloria points out in A Brutal Pack, Guilherme was harassing her daughter. Raul, Daniela's husband, said that his wife couldn't stand the guy, but the cast and the crew said they all noticed his fixation on her. So it's not Daniela stalking him and trying to, you know, <laughs> beg him to sleep with her. He's the one who's 
bothering her. He's calling her at home. He's always cornering her. And in fact, the cast and the crew of the show did not care for Guilherme and his behavior, expressing in a brutal pack that he was known to stomp around the studio, slam doors, and just tantrums all the time. So very similar to the behavior that he exhibited in the two shows, uh, theater shows that he was in as well. It also starts to emerge that Paula was insanely jealous of her husband's love scenes with Daniela and would in fact threaten to kill her because of them. A theory that would later be floated, which sounds about right to be honest, that uh, you know was possibly adding to Paula's distress was that she was pregnant at the time and that she wanted to take Daniela's place. Beautiful, glamorous, thin, famous, beloved, not pregnant, and dealing with morning sickness and swelling body parts, Daniela. Kissing her husband every day. Passionately kissing her husband every day. So in short, Paula was driven by both jealousy and greed. Probably not helping matters is that some felt that even though Guilherme was stalking Daniela, he probably is telling Paula that it's the other way around, which of course is fanning the flames because he knows how jealous Paula can be. Apparently, one of the things that Guilherme was pestering Daniela about was trying to convince her to talk to her mother, Gloria, who remembers the writer of the show, to write more scenes for him. He knows that their characters, Yasmin and Bira, are breaking up and that this is going to result in a loss of prestige for his character, but also for him as an actor. Because this pairing with Daniela on this very popular telenovela, it's kind of put him on the map. He's in the magazines all the time. He's in the papers all the time. He's getting recognized in the street. He's getting invitations to parties and premieres. And if he loses his screen time, that means his name is no longer in lights. And in fact, after the breakup scenes were filmed, Guilherme, he cried. He's, he's like bawling inconsolable about this. Um, but the, the crazy thing about this is that Bira and Yasmin were never supposed to end up together. And Guilherme is well aware of this. Like it was from the beginning established that they were not in game. They were not forever. Cast and crew on the set of the show urged Daniela to tell her mother what's going on so that basically she can just write this guy out of the show, write the character out of the show, and that'll be the end of it. Um, unfortunately, Daniela, she never got that chance. Meanwhile, Gloria, in the midst of all of this, she receives an anonymous phone call about her daughter's murder that will change everything. Stay tuned next week for part two of Tune Into Murder on the Dark Side of Love, where a mysterious gas station and two mystery witnesses will shed new light on the night Daniela was murdered. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of The Dark Side of Love. I'm your host, Bianca Sloan, and show your love for The Dark Side of Love by visiting thedarksideoflove.com for show notes and transcripts. Also, while you're there, you can find a link to my Patreon page where you can access bonus episodes and other fun stuff. Learn more about my suspense novels about The Dark Side of Love by visiting biancasloan.com. Thanks for hanging out with me and join me next time for another tale of love gone wrong. I'll see you on the dark side.